on the 11th day of October, Halloween gave to me 11 Bettys baking, 10 prices burning, 9 seagulls pecking, 8 scientists sneaking, 7 goldwin shooting, 6 psychic scamming, 5 naked witches, 4 aliens spelunking, 3 UFO abductions, 2 deputy so-and-sos, and a masked hawk being creepy. Hey there, everyone. Welcome to uh, another edition of the uh, 31 Days of Halloween. This, of course, is October 11th, uh, which makes it a, a beautiful Tuesday. I hope your Tuesday is going uh, exceptionally well. Uh, it is the day after my birthday, and so banks are open again. You'll be able to do the shopping that you need to do. Uh, so all of that is good. I, as you listen to this, I am somewhere in the Bahamas. Uh, presumably uh, not being buffeted by hurricane winds, but who knows? It's still uh, a, a ways away as I record this, so um, we could be battening down the hatches uh, as I speak. But I only say that to say, uh, if you drop me a line about this particular episode or the episodes you've been listening to for this calendar week, uh, I will be slower uh, in getting back to you just because I'm going to be incommunicado. There's not a lot of internet on the ship and whatnot. But as soon as I get back, I'll catch up with everybody. So uh, please do continue to send messages and so forth as uh, as the mood strikes you. Um, today, uh, we, we've talked about this before, that all of these movies fall into one of three categories. There are the movies that I love and wanted to watch again. There are movies I haven't seen in a long time and kind of wanted to reevaluate or re-experience. And then there are the movies like this one that are gaps in my cinematic knowledge. And... Who would have believed that I had never seen Whatever Happened to Baby Jane? But I never had. Uh, it was just one of those things that, that I'd always missed. And I think I avoided it a little bit because it was uh, it was over two hours long. And I wasn't sure that I was really down for this kind of movie. And then, of course, you watch it and you're like, oh, right, of course. This is a, a classic of cinema and it's terrific. And I was a real dumb dumb for having avoided it in the uh, in the past. So, uh, what is whatever happened to Baby Jane? If you've never seen it, if you're like me and had uh, avoided it, uh, whatever happened to Baby Jane is uh, the story of Baby Jane Hudson, who is later played by Betty Davis. But as the movie begins, she is a child star, and it's sort of that vaudeville era era of uh, of performing where she's on a stage and she does some dancing and she sings a song and especially this really creepy song that you sing to a dead father. I'm writing a letter to daddy. And she is also kind of terrible. She's just an awful kid uh, because she was raised on the stage and she's the star and, you know, is quick to remind her parents that they wouldn't have anything if it weren't for her. Like she's just awful. And living in the shadow of Baby Jane is her sister, Blanche, uh, who will later be played by Joan Crawford. And Blanche is, you know, certainly put upon by Baby Jane. Um, it tries to be a good sister, it seems. And uh, then as they get older, the, the fame sort of subsides for baby Jane, right? Like <laughs> a little girl singing and dancing only goes so far and the child has to grow up and then what happens? But because they have this entree into the world of entertainment, they both get jobs acting, both Blanche and baby Jane. And Blanche, it turns out, is a great actress. And so as baby Jane's star fades, Blanche finds success in the cinema and is considered a very good actress. And then one night everything changes when at a party um, there is a, a horrible accident in which a car strikes uh, Blanche and leaves her in a wheelchair and she ends up having to uh, leave the world of entertainment. And so you flash forward to where most of the movie takes place, which is in the more recent future. I mean, obviously this movie is 60-ish years old at this point, but in the present day of the time. And 
uh, baby Jane has been tasked with taking care of her sister Blanche. And they live in this old house and baby Jane is pretty clearly off her rocker right away. She just absolutely tortures Blanche. You know, she resents her sister for having been successful for the, she resents the world for having abandoned her. It's just a nightmare scenario where Blanche is completely dependent because she is on the second floor of this old house in a wheelchair with only her sister to care for. And baby Jane is absolutely bananas and will do uh, things like the, the thing that you probably associate with whatever happened to baby Jane. If you're like me is the fact that at one point, baby Jane cooks a rat for her to eat. But a lot of times it's just her like, leaving Blanche alone and not feeding her at all. And in, during the course of all of this, baby Jane is trying to stage a comeback by hooking up with this local piano player, uh, as played by Vic Victor Buono, um, who you may remember as King Tut from the Batman 66 series, if, if anything, but baby Jane wants to reclaim her stardom. And Victor Buono is just a low rent, musician who is looking for uh, a meal ticket and baby Jane promises to, you, you know, pay him on the regular. And so he gets kind of caught up in all of this as well. And there's a neighbor that is a big fan. Like one of, one of the, um, uh, motivating, uh, uh, plot points of the film is that because of cable television, Blanche's movies have sort of found this new revival where, Baby Jane is constantly being reminded of how much everyone loved Blanche. And it's just this horrifying situation made exceptional by the fact that Betty Davis is totally unhinged in this movie. It's a terrific performance. Uh, Joan Crawford is the, the very, you know, tried and true kind of upright moral character of Blanche. Although we may learn through the course of the film that maybe she's not as as innocent as all of that uh but it's it, it's a wonderful like two-hander of a story um using the old film parlance of you know it's two actors essentially working together and that's the majority of the movie is the two of them and they're both terrific uh betty davis in particular like it's her movie really and she is amazing in it she is so much fun. She's so crazy. She's having such a great time. The way that her eyes pop and, you know, there's also a thing where um, baby Jane has learned to fully imitate Joan Crawford or her sister Blanche. So, you know, when Blanche tries to cut her off uh, from the booze because baby Jane has a little bit of a drinky poo problem, uh, she just calls up the liquor store, baby, baby Jane does. Uh, and imitates her sister is like, oh no, this was a horrible mistake. Be sure you give her anything she wants. And it ends in a place that is genuinely surprising. Like there's a moment at the end of the movie that's heartbreaking and terrifying and uh, very sad. It's a very, uh, a very s bittersweet kind of movie. Uh, maybe not even sweet. Maybe it's just bitter, but it just ends in this, is such a heartbreaking place where you see how everything could have been avoided uh, that that takes place, but it couldn't be just because of the, the sort of innate pettiness of people. And it, particularly two sisters, you know, one of whom was desperate to be loved and the other, the other one who was loved. And um, yeah, it's, it's such a good movie. Oh my God. And if you've never seen it, uh, if you, like I said, if, if this is a, a cinematic gap, like it was for me, um, I just can't recommend it enough. I mean, it, it, it it's rich in its themes. Uh, the performances are outstanding, even though, you know, it's a hair over two hours, it really zips by because you're just so caught up in how good Betty Davis in particular is in this movie and very funny at times, like her like I said, she's having fun with the role. And so when she is particularly spiteful, it's really a good time, uh, as you're watching it, it's just a tremendous movie. And, uh, one that everyone needs to see. It is a classic of horror cinema for a reason. Um, it is 
is it truly scary? Nah, maybe not. But it's it's scary in the way that like misery is, is scary. In fact, as I was watching it, one of the things I kept coming back to was this. I don't know that misery would exist if whatever happened to Baby Jane did not. That Stephen King is obviously pulling from this movie for misery. Uh, there's just a lot of stuff in it that you're, you know, whether it's being confined to the wheelchair and trying to escape, um, you know, sort of the, the crazy caretaker, it, it's really all there. So if you want to see misery before misery happened, whatever happened to baby Jane is kind of that movie. So I'll leave it there. If you haven't seen it, you absolutely need to. The, the, uh, Robert Aldridge, uh, is the director of the film also directed a, a number of of uh of terrific movies uh including the longest yard which is one of my personal favorites uh also did um the dirty dozen so you know he was kind of a, a director of uh crowd pleasers if you've uh, years ago duncan and i talked about a movie with uh burt lancaster called Ulzano's raid that he directed as well um, he also did Hush Hush Sweet Charlotte, which is in the same vein, and another personal favorite of mine, The Flight of the Phoenix, uh, with Jimmy Stewart. He did the the classic noir film Kiss Me Deadly. So you could do worse than to just roll through the filmography of, of Robert Aldrich. He's a, a tremendous director and directs the hell out of this movie, too. So it, it, it's really, really good. Um, yeah, just, just a, a fantastic movie. So um, en enough about that. Tomorrow... We have a uh, another classic horror film, one that I also had not seen uh, a until doing these recordings. So we're gonna get into some uh, some giallo finally, and uh, and that'll be a good time. Oh boy, oh this is gonna be a good one. I think you're gonna enjoy it. Okay, so if you are listening to this on uh, the Dark Parade feed, be sure you're subscribing to the Legion Podcast feed on the podcast catcher of your choice, and likewise if you're a subscriber to uh, the uh, Legion podcast feed, hop over to the Dark Parade, which is the show that I do on the weekly, except of course for this month, where there is one of these dropping every single day. And uh, and then once I get back in town, we'll do some more business uh, as Halloween approaches, so uh, have no fear. Uh, all right, I think that is gonna do it for this time. Thank you so, so much for listening. Uh, be sure to drop a line. Oh, oh, I almost forgot to mention this. Um, if you want to go over to legionpodcasts.com, every post uh, uh, for the 31 days of Halloween is going to have links to where you can subscribe to the Legion Podcast feed, but also there are links to the social media stuff. Kevin's doing a great job with uh, Facebook and Twitter and, and uh, Instagram and that kind of thing. But if you, uh, if you hit the Discord link, that'll take you to the, the Legion Podcast server, and that's where I'm most active. So if you're listening to this, uh, drop by the Discord server there. Uh, we can talk about these movies in, uh, in in more detail. And I would love to. I'm very excited to hear what you guys think about these films. So, um, all right, that's it. Have yourselves a very spooky Tuesday. I will be back tomorrow with a new movie. Until then, enjoy the spooky season, folks. It's only going to get better from here. See you tomorrow. <laughs>